my plan for today is to I have four examples okay I have four let me just type in it's gonna be easier to type I have four examples uh, I have a singleton design pattern example which is um, uh, I forget what it is now but anyways I have it pre typed out <laughs> I forget the actual thing what was it I forget what it is now but it's okay so there's a singleton design pattern it's pretty short it doesn't really matter um, then I have the next one which is the composite this composite design pattern okay the exact examples I chose is oh yeah this is uh sets okay so I have an example about sets there uh, I have a state design pattern example which is about like a player of a game and then I have a um, a uh, observer which is about like a, a YouTube YouTube channel with subscribers so since it looked like based on the like outline of the uh, exam what was given to us it seems like a lot of it uh i don't know what that is um it seems like a lot of what we're going to be asked for is like coding stuff so like uh, based on like, let me just read the announcement make sure i'm saying things properly so uh the test will consist of uh four questions that involve code writing two questions that do not involve code writing so uh four questions that involve code writing um and i think it's important to get a good idea of all of these design patterns so my plan for today is to go through, you know, designing some software for each of these design patterns. So I have one example for each um, and we're just going to make it from scratch and just I'm going to show how we're implementing the design pattern in this and how the design patterns affecting all this. And I'll draw some diagrams and all that. Um, so that's pretty much my plan for today. And then if that doesn't take two hours, um, we can take a look. Uh, some people send me some questions to go over so we can take a look at those after but that's if we have time so uh, yeah there's that um any questions before we get going and starting on the singleton design pattern okay i'm going to uh, uh close most of these because i don't know why i have it. still have my flight test lab one stuff open here so let me close most of this um so this course, you know, there's not that many practice problems that I find, right? It's kind of hard to find that. Uh, so, okay, there we go. I think that's everything now. And then uh, I want the uh, client component both state. Okay, okay, that's good. Navigation. Where, where did I put all my projects now? There we go. Um, and the first one. Kind of government. Government. Yeah, okay, there we go. That was the first one there. Okay, so I think I'm ready to go. I'm ready to start with the with the first one. It's this one. Can I move it to another window? Hopefully, yes, I can. Perfect. Okay, so I can just copy it like that. So we are gonna start with a um, we are gonna start with our singleton example. So we're gonna you know design some software. I am recording by the way, in case anyone wants to ask me if I'm recording. Thank you for if, you're, if anyone thought that, but uh, I am recording. Um, so uh, uh, singleton design pattern. My idea for this one is that we have some sort of government. Okay, there's some sort of government class. Okay, uh, so let me try to draw this so it's a government class um it has a private uh year started okay let me maybe try to draw this a little bit better like a little accurately i guess i'll try to draw the uml diagram here pretty accurately so uh there is our government government okay it has a private int year started started okay which is an int um, it has a uh, string called title, private string called title. Okay. Um, and then it has a, uh, uh, well, it has a uh, static instance variable, right? A private static instance variable called instance, right? Instance. Oops. Uh, and I won't do the UML diagrams for all of them at the start, maybe for the rest of them we'll do after, but just one, this one's pretty simple. So it's one class. So I'll just do this instance, uh, which is a, uh, which is a government object. So of course that's going upside, but that says government. Um, and then we have the the methods, right? The method. So the one that makes it a singleton, which is our public static get instance. Instance. Okay. Um, uh, which will return. So it's our method, which will return a government object. So let me just do this. Government object. Um, and then I have get year started and get get title but i'll just write that as just i'll just say get get year and get title get title 
Okay. So again, I won't do the Yuval diagram for all of them, but this one is just, this was just simple here. So let's try to implement this, this thing and using a singleton design pattern. So the point of the singleton design pattern is that I only want one government to be created here, right? Like let's say we're running some sort of software for the, for the country. Uh, there should only be one instance of the government. So let's try that uh, here. I have this, I'm going to, I'm gonna do this in a new project. Okay, so um, uh, sorry, new project. I'll call this um, say live. Um, if anybody wants the code after, I can, I can uh, write the code after, like set the code. But that's up to you guys. Um, so I will create a new Java class, and I will call this government. Government. Okay, and I will just make it all part of the package. I'll say live. Oh. Um. Okay, it opened here for some reason. Uh, can I make it like this? There we go. Okay. So uh, in the government class, right, like I said, in the diagram, we want to just have some private variables, like I said. So it's going to be private. Um, what did I call it? Private int year started. Year started. Okay. I want to have a private uh, string, which is title. Um, and I want to have a private static uh, government. Oops. Government. Uh, I got government which is uh, a uh, called instance, right? And so this is what part of the actual singleton design pattern is that you have to have some sort of static variable that keeps track of the instance of government that you've created. Um, okay, so um, now uh, we're gonna have some sort of public government, some sort of constructor, right? But at the moment, let's just focus on the actual singleton design stuff for now, right? So we're gonna have some sort of constructor, but I need to have a get instance method. That's the kind of the point of the singleton stuff. So I'm gonna have a static, public static, um, it's going to return a government. Should have tried an easier word, use the easier word to spell than government. Um, and uh, it's going to be called get instance. Okay. And so the point of this is that we ask, you know, if uh, instance equals null, right? So if our uh, instance variable right now is null, which it is to initialize with, uh, then we just set instance equal to new government. This is where we create a thing. And uh, Importantly, this should be the only place that you need that you want to have uh, access to initialize the government. So you want the constructor to actually be private. Okay, so there's essentially three parts. Oh, well, let's let's just finish this quickly. The last part is just return instance. Um, there's essentially three parts to being a singleton design. So this is part one, uh, a private constructor, part two, and then having this method is your right, of just being a, a singleton design. So now this code is a singleton design, but let's try to make it actually like do something, right? So I'll create some, uh, I'll create some, uh, just I think uh, getters, let's just use getters for this. Um, so I'll just say, um, uh, insert code getter for year started and uh, string. So there's our thing. Okay, but maybe I'll move that um, not there. Put that in here. Um, so now I have just some getters for this, which is just convenient to have. And then I will also want to just, you know, actually put something in the government part. So we want to, you know, have some way to create some sort of year started, set some title and something like that, right? So let's say in the, uh, how I did it in the code that I did before is I created, uh, I just took, uh, like, I took some user input. I thought that would be just a good time to also, since this is a pretty simple project, like this class is pretty simple. Let's just also take user input. So I'll say, Scanner, I have to import the package. So scanner, uh, scanner equals new scanner. And we have to say uh, system.in, which just shows that uh, this scanner object is going to be taking in user input from the keyboard. Um, and then uh, just uh, system.out.print print uh, to say, uh, what did I say? Enter the title of the government. Enter the title of the government. Right, I'll do that first, and then I'm going to say that uh, th uh, this dot title. I think I can just say title. Actually, sorry. This dot title. Question? No, I think someone just has their mic on. Check your mic settings. Uh, COE five twenty eight. Yes, I should have this chat open. Ah, can I zoom in on the NetBeats project? That's a good question. Yes, is that is that an issue that uh, people can't see? Uh, let's see. Win tools. Let's see. Um, view. Toolbar. 
the I, I can't just scroll for some reason is alt scroll wheel oh okay okay thank you perfect yes i guess you can yeah yeah there you go i got it yeah thanks um okay people can see now probably how about i take this take this down there we go. it looks much better now good sounds good thank you for letting me know thank you for letting me know and thank you for the tip about alt scroll wheel i didn't know that um okay so i'm just going to you know we want the title of the government so i'm just going to say uh scanner dot uh, uh next int right which will just take it oh no sorry not next int next line next line because that's going to be the next line that's put in and then i also just want to do the same thing but this time i'm going to uh you know say please enter the year started year started right and this time i'll say next int um uh oh sorry this dot year started Okay, so just a way to get some sort of input here, and that's pretty much it. There is our class constructed. That is a singleton design pattern because, but the singleton part is just this, and I just want to show you that you know you you don't just have to have only the singleton stuff. Like there is some other functionality, obviously, that you put into the code. Um, so you have this, you have this, you have the fact that it's private, and you have the fact that you have a get instance method, and and so there's no other way to create a government class, right? Except by this get instance method. So at this point, we can just say we can just try something. So uh, public static void main string args okay just making a main file and let's just do it here i i created i'll just copy and paste this there's no point in me retyping this so uh there here's some test code we can use let me just bring this back um so uh we create some sort of government g right using the get instance method that's the only way to create a government to access the government object right is to use the get instance method and then from here, uh, I just uh, print, you know, g dot get title, g dot start year, uh, get year started, right? And then I say, okay, a different government B, but the only way I can create a government object, remember, is by using this get instance method. So I do it again, and then I print the same thing, but with B now, right, with the government B. And when I run this, you should see it's the same thing uh, twice. So I'm going to say uh, run file. Uh, there we go. Enter the title of the government. Canada. Enter the year started. That'd be great if I knew that. Uh, I don't know. 1780. I have no idea. Anyway, so this is Canada 1780, Canada 1780, um, twice. So you can see that the B, the B, sorry, yeah, the G and the B objects, like these reference variables, are pointing to the same thing, right? Even though they're different. And because I got them from the same way, right? Uh, if we modify G, it's, will its modifications be passed through B? Yes, because there's, there's only one government. So it doesn't matter how many reference, like, pointers you have to it, right? There's only one government class. So yes. We modify G as modifications we found. It's not mutable though, right? I, I've created this as an immutable class, um, but uh, but yeah, I think. Is there anything that's mutable? No, it's all private and there's no setters. So yeah, it's, it's immutable. But yes, if there was some mutable part to it, then yes. Um, okay, there you go. That's the example of the singleton one. Not super complicated, right? So, um, you know, it, but uh, feel free if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, there's some pings that I missed here. Where's the ping that I missed? Where is it? Oh no, it's it's just the two that people said just now. Okay. Um, any questions about the singleton design pattern? Well, I have a sip of my water. One person's typing, so I'll just let them finish. But um, yeah. So we implemented this. All this time. Looks like they're done typing. Okay, so um, composite will be next. So my idea for composite, I'm not going to go into like, uh, you know, I'm not going to draw the UML diagram at the second, but we have a we have a set class, right? Well, I guess I can go a little bit into the UML diagram just to, just to make sure that uh, we know what's going on here. So let me actually open my notes just so I can make sure I'm saying the right thing here. Um, oh yeah, and as always, you know, my notes are available at my website, tutor.ca slash notes right so you can visit there and uh i have notes for this course that are updated until uh midterm time so in general a composite looks like this i will show which one i did let me make sure i'm doing the right one here let me uh get my composite files here i did a set component um where is the rest of them? Set 
and did I close it? No. Oh yeah, it's right here, the one that's open. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we have three classes for this one. Um, infrastructure. Da -da. Yeah. And do I have a client? Did I make a client for this? Okay. So the the structure that we're going to be using from the notes uh, looks like this. So it's essentially the second generic structure. Okay. So uh, this is the kind of like not specified to the example that I'm doing. So you essentially have some client interacting with this. This is the main part. So the point of the composite method, composite design pattern, is you can have these composite objects, right? Which either contains other contain other composite objects or leaves, right? So some sort of just like final thing. So the best way to understand this is like a folder, right? It's so like a folder on your computer, right? Can hold like actual files. I'll just say that's a file, right? Or other folders. And those folders can hold files, right? And da 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 da. And we want to be able to say some operation is being used uniformly here, right? So I can call, I can call, you know, get size. Like this is the example that the teacher did. So I'm, I'm not going to use this example as my actual code, but you can call something like get size on a folder and it will just ask get size for all of its children. And so then since, so if you call get size on this, it'll get the size of this, it'll get the size of this, but calling get size on that folder will just, again, cause this to happen, right? So, um, uh, essentially, the point is, is you want to be able to call certain methods on objects, on leaves, and composite objects in the same way. You kind of don't really want to particularly care if they're composite objects or leaves, right? You just want to be able to do it. And this generic method two is, does that a little bit better. Um, uh, less safe, but does it a little bit better. So there's that. Um, okay, so this is how we're going to code the, this one here. So the way it works, um, I don't think I made a client. I'm just going to check if I made a client. You don't have to have a client. Um, set. No, it looks like I did make a client because I don't see any main method here. Uh, yeah, I, I made a client then. Uh, let me just see my code. Is it? Uh, oh, yeah, I think it's called client composite. There you go. There it is. Um, so the client is essentially just a uh, class. Let me just do this here. So we have a client composite, which is the one that I created, right? Which is just has a main method, right? So client composite. Um, so we won't do the exact UML diagram for this, just to give you an idea. This is just to give you an idea of, of what it looks like. So uh, the client composite is using, right? A, um, a component abstract. So this is an abstract class, right? Which I'm just gonna call set component. Okay. And a set component is either going to be a number, right? So we're just going to imagine sets like math sets that either, you know, have numbers in them, right? Or there are, uh, you know, composites, which are just like, you know, uh, like folders, which are just sets, right? So a set component is either a number or another set. And so a set, right, can contain either a number, multiple numbers, multiple sets, single set, doesn't matter, contains some combination of set components. Um, and so then I think we, at this point we say we do a little triangle here. Oops, let me just do it like this, right? So we say like this, which is the aggregation relationship, which is to say that uh, uh, one, set, uh, one set can have zero to many uh, uh, set components, right? You can have zero or many set components. And again, the client is really just here to interact with this. It's just to be, have some sort of access point here. This is where the main file is. That's the whole point. There's no main... There's no main method in all this. So again, we're talking about, in this example, we're gonna be talking about sets, like number sets. Like when I say sets, I mean like like the discrete math sets that we do, like that. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and code this. Um, so the way I do this, I'm just gonna open up a new, um, I'll just open up a new file. So we'll start uh, with the, uh, yeah, let's see what we start with. So let's start with creating a uh, set component right? A set component. So a set component. Oh yeah. And sorry. And then the operation, the operation that I'm going to support through all of this, right? So again, we, we have to have some sort of operation, oops, operation that we're going to support through all of this is sum, right? Sum of some set component. Set component. So when you call the sum of the set component, if you call it on a set, it'll just add together all the numbers. Uh, if you uh, call sum on a number, it'll just return itself, right? Because the sum of itself is a set. Um, okay, 
so uh, I guess we'll start with set component or we can start with number actually. Let's start, maybe start with the concrete one. So the two things that are gonna be in this uh, composition, right? So maybe let's start with that. So I'll start with a Java class and it'll be called number, okay? Uh, and it's part of the same package. So uh, here it is. Okay, so in the number class, uh, could you zoom in occasionally when you're on the code, please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, did I uh, forget? Let me open this up like this so that it's like this. If I forget, just remind me and I, I will zoom in, of course. Um, okay, so a number, right, um, is going to be extending. So it extends set component, right? Because set component is the uh, kind of like parent class for the numbers and the sets, right? Uh, but we'll deal with that in a second. It's an error, but it doesn't matter. So anyway, so there's going to be a private int number, right? Because a number has an actual value, which is, we'll just call it an integer for now. Right? Uh, and then I'm going to uh, just make some sort of constructor for it so that we can create a number with some sort of value, right? So I just said, uh, I just said int number, uh, this dot number equals number. So there we go. Now we can create number objects that have some sort of particular value. Um, but remember, we also want to have this, um, well, actually, for now, this is fine, but we can just leave it like this. This is pretty much all we would want to create in a number. We're going to add to this when we have to deal with what exactly is in a set component. But for now, this is just the basic outline of a number is just a number, like an int. And you can just, you can assign it by creating it through the constructor, a public constructor. Uh, let's try set now, I think. Um, yeah, okay. Let's try set. Um, so a set, again, we're going to add to all this code after, but I'm going to create a new object here. So live class, okay, I'm going to call it a set. Uh, Set.java already exists. Uh, is it, be uh, why does set.java already exist? I mean, it does, of course, but, uh, oh, I'm in the wrong package here. If I, if I go here and I say class and I say set, yes, there we go, forget it. Okay, it's just because I have, because I coded this R before, so it thinks I was in the wrong package there. Um, Okay, so a set is just going to be an array list of set components. That's all it's going to be, right? So we need to import uh, java.util.arraylist, okay? And I'm just going to create an array list. So um, a private, private array list, list, and it's only going to have set components, right? Oh, sorry, I'm going to zoom in so you can see set component. Okay, um, and uh, we're gonna, well, uh, actually, that's actually all we're gonna do here for now, right? Because uh, when I create a set, that's when I wanna make the actual array list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a constructor. So public set, um, and when I when I create the, uh, sorry, I have to give it a name. So I called it a uh, elements, elements. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is just, you know, say uh, this is um, uh, elements. When I create the thing, when I create the actual class, an instance of the class, we're just gonna say elements equals new array list. And we only want to have set compo components going in. Uh, yes, that looks right to me. Just comparing to what I said here. Um, oh, and I guess I need to have that here too. Uh, does the composite need to extend the component? I always forget which name means what, so let me look back at the diagram. Uh, the composite needs to extend the component. Yes, the composite needs to extend the component because the composite is made up of components. So let me let me write this here, right? The composite, this is the composite, right? This is the composite. So the composite is, there's an aggregation relationship saying that the composite is made up of set components, which are either other sets, other composites, or numbers, which, in, which is comparing up here, it's composite and leaves, right? But in this case, we can, yeah. No problem. Um, okay, so, Carrying on with um, this one here. So, uh, you know, it's telling me that I have an issue. I have a uh, set components, right? That's not something I've done yet. So I've just created like what a set is. A set is an array, is an array list. A number object is just an integer. Um, but now let's actually go ahead and create what a set component is, right? So we've done, we've done the basic outline of what these two are. We're gonna edit them because they have to inherit some methods from here. But now let's go ahead and say what a set component is. Um, so, I'm going to create, uh, I'm going to go actually right click right here, live code, new, uh, uh, wait, shouldn't set extend set component then? Yes, it should. Set. Yes, it should. Thank you. Uh, uh, extends. <laughs> set component. There you go. 
Um, so now I'm going to uh, make a new Java class. Uh, this Java class is going to be set component. Right? And this is going to be an abstract class. So uh, set component. Yeah. Uh, so this is going to be a public abstract class set component. So we don't want to ever create a set component. The only thing that actually exists is a number or a set, right? Um, but in the set component, right, we are going to just have a bunch of abstract methods in here. So the first abstract method you want to have in your set component, it doesn't matter first, but like the first one we're going to put is the one that's supported, right? So uh, the, the, the sum method is uniformly supported by all set components, right? So I'm going to make that. I'm going to say a public abstract, uh, not void, uh, int, is it int? Uh, int sum. Okay, so I'm going to just say that all set components should have the ability to be called upon, you know, the sum command. Um, and then there is, uh, you know, some other, there are some other things we need, right? Uh, just dealing with these kinds of things. So here, okay, what I'm trying to say is we have these child children managing classes is what they're called. Children managing, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say classes, children managing methods. I'm going to fix that after. Children managing methods, right? And so adding a component, removing a component, getting a component, or getting a component count, these are all just things that seem to be just basically you, you include it when you're talking about when you're using the composite design pattern. You include these managing classes. Um, I don't actually know if it's a, if it's, a, if it's like a right or wrong requirement to have them, but I, th I think I would just, you should just put them. Um, so uh, we'll do that. We will include these. These should be in the set component. Uh, let me just put it here, right? So we need to have all of the things I just mentioned. We need to have a public uh, abstract void, uh, which is add component, which takes in a um, set component comp, I'll just call it. We need to have a public ab abstract void uh, remove component, uh, remove component, okay, which will also take in a set component comp, okay. Um, and then I need to have a public abstract uh, set component. So this one is the component, is the get component. Uh, method. This is really just returning an, uh, sorry, uh, it's not returning an index. This is um, uh, returning the set component, which is at index i, right? And public, public, final one, abstract int uh, get component, okay, which takes in, uh, uh, oh, sorry, get component count. So this just returns how many components we have in this thing. Coding is yes, that's true. We are we are coding here, computer engineers. Um, so uh, yeah, so here's our abstract. These are all these things. And remember, these methods can only be called upon by uh, let me find it by the composite. Now technically, they like they literally can be called upon by the leaves, but you're not supposed to let that happen. Which is why this is an unsafe way of doing it. Now you can also put these methods only in here, right, and make them not abstract. But then you have to um, uh, what's the, what's the word? You have to like, uh, force them to be the data type, uh, late binding, late binding. You have to, there's another word that I'm trying to say. I forget now, but, uh, yeah, you have to force them to be a certain data type, the composites, um, cast them. You have to type cast them to be a composite before you do it. You have to type cast the component to be a composite. Okay. Um, but we'll do it like this because it's easier to do it like this. So, um, here we have, that's it. That's the entirety of our, uh, set component. So a set component is just a class that supports all of these methods here. Now, this is the one that's uniformly supported. And these are called uh, the children managing uh, method. I keep saying classes. No. Question? No, someone just got their mic. Check your mics, everyone. Check your mics. No, just, just turn them. Just turn them down. Um, okay. So Okay. Do you want to close? Chris, your elbows look hard. Thank you, Manuel. I don't know if Manuel's still here, but thank you, Manuel. I am. Oh, hey, how's it going? I wanted to join you guys. <laughs> Learn some coding. So, Switch yeah, back exactly. to computer. No, no, no. I gotta do. I gotta do back shit. But <laughs> I um, understand. Nice seeing it. 
Yeah. Bye-bye, yeah. everyone. Good okay, luck. Bye, I love you, Adam. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay. Okay, so... Okay, so... Tired as he did sound tired. It sounds like a mechanical Jesus. engineering problem. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I was about to say, I'll say you problems, yeah, yeah. though. <laughs> uh, Ethan asked a question. Why can't we put children managing methods in the set class? Children managing methods. We can put children managing methods in the set class. We can't put them in the leaf class. Uh, leaf class. It doesn't make sense to put children managing methods in the leaf class, right? Uh, because they're like uh, the leaf is just like a number. It doesn't make sense to add a component to a number right? or get a component from a number. Uh, why are we putting them in the component abstract class instead of just the set class? Uh, the reason we do this is because I can then say, I, when I declare a variable which is of type component, right? I can then just say component dot add component or something like that, right? If I didn't have this here, I would have to say typecast that variable from component to composite or to set, right? And then call add component. But if I if I have it in both, if I have it in the abstract class and I have it in the composite, then I don't have to do any typecasting. Right? I don't have to do any typecasting. But it runs the risk of you by accident calling add component on a leaf. But like if you know like that's not gonna happen by accident. Uh, but you can't have an object of type component because it's an abstract class. Yeah, so you're going to declare the pointer to be pointing to a, uh, the reference variable to be po referencing a component, right? But that's actually going to be either a composite or a leaf, either a set or a number, right? So I'm going to declare variables that are set components, but they're actually going to be either sets or numbers. And I'm going to want to be able to call upon them these children managing classes. Right? Just call upon the set component, children managing class. That's the, that's the idea. Okay. Um, so let's continue here. Uh, that's it. That's all for set component. That's completely done. We have our children managing classes and the actual one supported method. Let's go back now. Of course, the other uh, pieces of the code aren't working anymore, right? So uh, number, let's see what the issue is. Uh, number is not abstract and does not override get component, set component, da 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 da. So the, the way you do this here is, uh, you know, you can either make it throw an error or generally you can just make it return nothing right so that's that's kind of and this is how like she actually did it in the code like i'm not just making this up this is how she did it in the lecture is if you have a situation like this where you know number now has to have some sort of concrete implementation of add component remove component get component get component count all that but again it doesn't actually make sense to call that on a on a leaf on a number so what you do is you just make them you'll see what i mean public like so let's put an implementation that doesn't do anything add component right this will take in a set component comp right and it will do nothing yeah. that's it you just make it do nothing um and so now you know we're satisfying the fact that this is inheriting from set component but it doesn't actually do anything when you say add component so in another way to say this is like you just like the user shouldn't call add component remove component on a number because it just like we, we don't make any promises like that's like the like the procedural abstraction thing like we don't make any promises about what it's going to do if you do this stuff so it doesn't matter what i choose here so i'm just going to say public void remove component okay it's also going to take in a set component comp it will also do nothing public uh what is this return set component get component this will take in an int i right this will it has to return something so it's going to return void uh, return null um oh why did that not work i have to put a semicolon there we go and then finally public int get component count takes in nothing uh, it just returns zero there you go so we just have to put these here because it has to satisfy that it's extending from set component but they don't actually do anything because it doesn't make sense to call these methods on a leaf on a number we still have an underline, and that's because I need to implement the sum, right? I need to, you need to be able to call sum on a number. And so it has to ma has the same like matching uh, uh, signature. So it's going to be, uh, what was it in set component? It was a public int sum. Okay, so uh, public int sum. Okay, you just call upon this. Uh, what it's going to return, right? Return is just itself, right? The, the not, not the self as in like a variable itself, as in like a, class of itself, but literally like the number that's being held within this number class. 
just return that that's the sum um okay and this is now done with the number class this is what the number class is going to look like so now let's move on to set right let's finish up set here so set will actually have implementations of the add component remove component get component co uh, get component count those child managing classes because this is where you actually have the array list right let's first put in the sum right so this is a uh, this is the uh, method that has to be supported uniformly so let's put in public int sum right and this is an important part of the this is an important part of the um, uh, composite design pattern right uh, important I don't know important um, so is this sum method well okay so it can be it doesn't have to be exactly sum right but the point is is this the idea that you have this is the method that's being uniformly supported, right? So it has to be written like this. Um, you have to call that method for all of the children of the, or sorry, for all of the elements of this array list. So in case of a sum here, I'm gonna say int, I wanna keep track of something. So I'm gonna say int sum equals zero, right? I'm gonna say for set component, ah, component int elements in elements. Right? So for every element in elements, um, I want to say sum plus equals element dot sum. Uh, and then I finally, I want to return sum. So what this code is going to do is it's going to just declare a variable sum as zero. And then for every element in this array list, it's going to call element dot sum. It's going to get the sum and we're going to add that to this running tally here. Right. And at the end, it's going to be a, uh, it's going to just be a number. And we can do this because these elements are all set components. And since they all inherit from this set component abstract class, they all have a sum method, right? And this means I can call sum on them. So when it is a set, when we're calling sum on a set, it's just gonna do this method again, but within that new set, right? Within that new composite. But if it's calling this on just a number, it's just gonna, that's just gonna return the number because that's what we wanna add. We just wanna return the value of the number. So the sum method is now done, right? And that's the uniform. Yeah, yeah, it is like recursion. Absolutely, right? So, I, you know, when I call, if I have, um, it was, actually, I'll draw a picture when we get to the main method and you know, I'll show you there that it, yeah, you're right. It is exactly like recursion. Um, okay, so uh, number is done. I just got to fix set. So set is just not quite done because I need to actually override those abstract things. So let me actually put here, uh, I think I'm supposed to put um, override. Um, I, I don't think it actually makes any difference, but. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Let me put override here as well. Uh, and I, I guess these should all have overrides before them, but whatever. It's fine. I won't do that. Okay, so now let's actually override uh, the child managing classes. So what were our child managing classes? How about instead of flipping back and forth, I'll just split screen this. There you go. Um, so our child managing class... Oh, that's the next example. Uh, where are we? There we go. Set. So... Um, the first one we need is add component, public void add component. Okay. Uh, and, uh, this is going to take in a set component comp as to match the, uh, as to match the, uh, abstract, uh, signature. So we're going to say override this okay, and add component. Well, all it is, is you just say elements dot add, uh, it's an array list. It's very easy to work with. Uh, next one, public void remove component. Component. It's going to take in a set component comp. And what it's going to do, elements dot remove comp. There we go. That's it. Uh, is that it? <laughs> Make sure that's it. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, then, oh, sorry, lowercase r though. I don't know why I made that capital. Uh, now we want to do the same thing, but for get component. So this is going to be a public set component component, um, and it's called uh, get component. So this is going to take in some integer i, and it's just going to return the uh, ith element from the uh, array list. So I'm just going to say elements dot uh, returns right return elements dot get is that the code? Elements.get? Yeah. Uh, 
Finally, we have a public public int get component count. Okay, um, and this is going to return an int, so it's just going to return the length of the array list. So we're going to return elements dot size, and that returns the length of the array list there. Okay, so we now have a set class that has all of the overriding of the uh, child managing classes. And then we also have the it overriding the sum method. We have, a, a, what's it called, a constructor. Uh, we have a number, which overrides all these child managing classes because it has to, but it doesn't actually do anything. And it shouldn't be called. These methods should not be called. Um, it overrides the sum by just returning itself. Uh, and you can create a number with some sort of value. And then finally, we have a set component, which is this all it inherits from. So the last thing to do to actually see if this works is to make a new Java class and call it uh, client composite. Okay, and make sure it's in the same package, right? Client composite. It doesn't have to be composite, but whatever. Just some other client. Uh, but again, it has to be in the same package. So from here, we're just, I don't need this anymore. Let me just put this back there. Oh, no, that's not what I meant to do. Um, from this client composite now, I just am gonna, I just have some sort of main file. So let me, again, I'll just show you the main that I put together. So there's the main I put together. We want to, uh, someone got their mic on again. Dream to eight. I think you got your mic on. Dream to eight. No, no luck. Okay. Everybody just turn him down, I guess. I don't, do I have the ability to mute him? I don't have the ability to mute him, so whatever. Um, um, okay, so let's. Uh, here's the main method I put together. So set. Com uh, Discord's being weird. Let me open up the chat again. Uh, what chat were we saying things in? It was in 528? Yeah, okay. So I have a, I have 528 open. Set component C1. I'm going to create a set component, which is a set. I'm going to create a set component, which is a set, different sets, okay? I'm going to, um, uh, how about this? Let me just take a screenshot of this quickly. And then um, uh, just draw what this looks like. So we have a set C1, okay, which contains, well, okay, I don't know what it contains yet. Then add component for, to C1, I'm going to add C2, which is another set, right? I'm going to add C2, which is another set there. Okay. To C1, I'm also going to add C3, which is a number, which is the number five. Okay. So C3 is a number five. They're all set components though, right? Um, because the array list in the set can only hold set components. Uh, so set component C4 is another number, which is the number three. So I'm going to add that to C2. So I'm going to add the number three. And then to C2, I'm also going to add the number four. Right, so this is kind of the structure here. So if I call get, uh, if I call sum on C1, it should be five plus the sum of this, which is three plus four. So very much recursion, right? You just call it on this here. When it gets to here, it'll just return like a base case. And here, when it gets to here, it's just going to call itself again until it gets to a base case. And the base case is just um, a number, not having a set anymore. So, anyways, we should get. Um, out of this when I add all this together. So let's try it. Um, I will uh, run my client composite and the sum of all, it's very small, but the sum of all the elements is 12. So there we go. It did in fact work. And the benefit of this, right, is now that you can you can call c1.sum, right, c1.sum, and it, it you know, you have this kind of structure where you can build sets within each other and ask certain questions about them and like that. That's it for composite. Any questions about the composite design pattern while I open up the next bit of code? Next one we're doing is state. So any questions, let me know. Okay, sounds like we're good. So uh, let's move on to our state pattern. Okay, sorry, there's two questions. I mean, there's two people typing, so let me go ahead and type first. The state I need, um, oops. 
Und 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 das habe ich immer noch nicht. Ja, das should be. Uh, can I go over the class diagram again? I'm a bit confused by the abstraction. Class diagram like uh, like this, like how this works here. That's what you mean by class diagram? That, that, that's a class diagram, sorry. Yeah, that's what you mean. Yeah, okay. So, um, so when you call client, when client composite, right, uh, creates these variables, right? Client composite is gonna create these. These are the actual variables, like the reference types that we're creating. It'll when we create them, it'll either be a number or it'll be a set, right? So, you know, numbers and sets are set components. That's the first kind of relationship we have here, right? So numbers and numbers and sets are set components. Okay, so that's the first kind of abstraction that we have. Um, did I, oh, whatever. But then we have this idea here that a set, right, one set contains zero or more set components, right? Like this set here contains two set components, right? And a set component is again, either a number or a set itself, right? So this set contains two set components. This set, this set component contains, sorry, this set contains uh, two set components as well. Of course, it can have more than two. Um, but yeah, so that's essentially the abstraction. We have these, like something is a, like so numbers and sets are set components, sets, contain set components. And those are the two kinds of abstractions we have. Did, do you want me to explain that more? Or how do you feel about that? Uh, and then there's another question. When you call get component count, is it asking for the total number of components under it or just the ones that are directly connected to it? Um, just the ones that are, just the, just the ones that are directly connected to it. Just the ones that are directly connected to it. Um, but, um, Let's see maybe how she did in the lecture. Maybe I'm misinterpreting it. Let's see. I'll take a look quickly. Yeah, sounds good that you understood that. Um, maybe she didn't do it in the lecture. Somebody wanna look, cause I don't, know, I don't wanna spend too much time in silence here. Uh, does somebody wanna look in the lecture and see if she did it as, you know, get component, when, when she did the method get component count, uh, if that includes if that's like all of the, like if you said get component count on C1, should that return two or should that return, well, one, two, three, four? No, I, I, I'm 95% certain it's it's just uh, it's just two. Like C2, C1 has two components. Uh, if there were any instance variables in set component, would they have to be protected? Uh, if there are any instance variables in set component, uh, let me look at set component. Set component like this. Well, um, set component. Uh, like, what? What? Why would you want to have an instance variable? Like, uh, like I understand there's so maybe there's some application of it. Okay, so let's say okay, let's say each set had some sort of name. Like each set component has some sort of name. Um, then, uh, then, what would you say? I don't think they would have to be protected. Why would they have to be protected? I think they would. They could just be whatever. Yeah, I think it's just got the number of elements directly under it. Okay, so yes, so get component count is just the number of elements directly under it, which is uh, which is what I, I have, which is like, uh, that is how it's implemented here. So it'll only be two. Yes, it'll only be two. That is correct. And then we have this. Okay. Um, can I try alternative one? Yeah, so essentially alternative one, I haven't thought about that really. So let's let's try to think about it together here. What difference would I have to make in how I do alternative one? So alternative one is um, removing it from here, right? So removing it from here, let's go through it. Okay, let's let's mess up the code a little bit and, and go through it. Uh, did I close everything already? Uh, it's okay, whatever. I'll just, oh no, I don't need government. I need everything except government. Uh, so uh, client composite, set composite, set number, okay. And I'll just close the rest of these. I don't care about this. There we go. Huh. 
uh, this is being recorded. Let me make sure I'm recording. I am recording. Okay, good. <laughs> um, but yes, this is this is being recorded. Um, so, uh, why is this not moving now? It's not letting me. Like if I click if I click projects, it covers the code. Okay, whatever. Uh, we're here now. Um, so I want to try alternative one. So the point of alternative one is that I remove these guys. I remove these guys. Okay. Uh, from the abstract class. I keep clicking the wrong window. There we go. I remove them from the abstract class. So let me go to the abstract class and I'll just comment them out. Oops, wrong slash. Comment them out. Okay. So the abstract class only has the uniformly supported um, method. What that means now is in my number class, I have no need for any of this. Wrong slash again. Okay. Um, and what that means now in set, why is set giving me an error? Override. There's no override. I'm not overriding anything anymore. Right? No point in saying override. Client composite, we have an issue. Okay, so I'll, I'll deal with that in a second. Um, but these classes, all that's changed is I removed the abstract classes from the abstract methods, which are the child managing method from the abstract class. And so now number doesn't have to override anything. Um, and set doesn't have to override anything either. It just has to give an actual concrete implementation. The thing is now in my main method, this doesn't work anymore. I can't just say c1.add component c2. I have to specifically say uh, c1 typecasted to a set add component c2. c1 typecasted to a set add component c2. Because add component is only a method that the set class has, right? Oops. So now when I run this, it should work. Uh, still have an error for some reason. Why do I have an error? No, I don't have an error. I think it's just being weird. So I can run it and it builds now, but I have to typecast the, set, the, the sets. Yes, I have to typecast the sets to sets because only sets have the ability to do add components, not all set components. So all set components, you can't call add component on them anymore only sets. So you have to manually declare them as, first of all, they are sets, but you have to actually change the reference variable, like typecast it to a set. Um, and uh, because again, that's the only, the only ones that can have add component. But the issue with this is that now you're not treating sets and numbers uniformly, right? That's the thing. Like I'm not like uniformly would mean that I just say C1 here, but now I have to specifically know that C1 is a set. And then I have to, um, Typecast it to that. Uh, this is for the first generic structure. Uh, this is number one, I think. Yes, this is number one. Let me find it. I don't know where I put it now. There we go. Uh, generic structure one. This is generic structure one. I did it before generic structure two. Where would you have to typecast? Right here. This is right in the main file. That's where I put it. Um, so this is, I did it before generic structure two, but this is generic structure one. And there we go. There's our explanation. Good question though. Yes, that's good to, to ask about generic structure one because we might have something similar. Just remember that if you're calling add component on a reference type, right? Uh, that reference type has to have that method supported, right? So C1, which is a set component, does not have add component supported. There is no add component method. Uh, do you think they'll tell us what structure to use on the midterm? Um, maybe, maybe it's up to you. Maybe it's, you have to they like you have to tell them what structure to use. Maybe they put a question like that. I don't know. Um, I, yeah, I, I honestly can't tell you. It, like, could be either. They're essentially equivalent. It's just that with one of them you have to typecast, and with one of them it's a little bit less safe because you have these methods that don't do anything, and so the the code might not work exactly how you expect it to. Right? These methods are weird. Like they on purpose. Like they have to be. They have to do nothing. Uh, why can't we clear C1 and C2 as sets instead of set components? Um, let me just see here. Um, because if I declared C2 as a set, so I could declare C1 as a set, that's fine. But I can't declare C2 as a set because um, only set components can go within sets. So if I declared C2 as a set, then I couldn't put C2 within this set. Because once again, only set components can go into sets. I could declare this one as a set because it's not going into anything. That's fine, right? It doesn't matter. But uh, this one I could not declare as a set. 
And this. Yes, second point is abstract, so it can't be initialized, yes. Okay. Um, any other questions for composite? Otherwise, I will move on to state. Okay. I'm going to state. So for my state design pattern, I have an example of a player, right? There is a player who can be in one of two attacking states, right? So there's some sort of state variable, right? Um, and it can be in one of two attacking states, right? So we have this sort of abstract state class and the two inheriting types that I put are, um, uh, what did I call it? I called it bow state state and sword state okay in the bow state you can call the attack method okay uh, and in the in the bow state it says like you shot a bow whatever that's the, that's how it, that's how it works and in the sword state you can also call the attack method right um, and in fact we want to be able to just say, uh, let me just make sure I know what I'm saying. Yes, we want to just be able to say player dot attack, right? We want to just tell the player to attack, right? So attack, we want to have some sort of attack method. This attack method, I'll just show you the code, is just going to say state dot attack. It'll just call the attack method of the state, right? So a uh, relationship like this, I guess a dotted relationship, right? Uh, yeah has like so a player uses a state variable yeah i guess you could call it an aggregation too like one to one no that doesn't make sense maybe i'm wrong let me let me check my notes um so yes actually they call it one to one they do call it a one to one so um uh the uh one player object contains one state it is aggregation yes Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and code this. So let's start this time with the, um, uh, what should we start with? I don't know what we should start with. We can start with these two. Mm. Let's start with the both, okay, both state and sword state. Or maybe let's start with player, actually. I think let's start with player. That makes more sense. So uh, Java class, I'm gonna create a class called player. Uh, it's in the same package, doesn't really matter. Uh, and there we go. Player.java. Okay. So here is my player class. It doesn't extend anything, just a player. Okay. Um, the player, right, will have a couple variables. Let's just give it a couple variables here. I'll say uh, uh, public int health. Public int health. Oh, sorry, private. I don't know why I said public. Private int health. Private um, uh, int level, and importantly for the uh, state design pattern, we need to have a public state state. Okay, state is a data type that we're gonna, you know, abstract data type that we're gonna uh, define. But for now, it's just that. And then I need to have a, um, a constructor, right? So I'll just I'll just say uh, it's gonna take in uh, int uh, int health and an int level and we create the player with this dot health uh you know sorry this dot health equals health and you know why even start it with a level like that doesn't even matter let's, let's just say uh, this dot level equals zero let's just say that um and we want to start the player off in some state right so i'm going to give it some state i'm going to say this dot state equals new i'm going to call it i'm going to say let's start in the sword Maybe you can put that as an input parameter too, if you, if you wanted to. You could say, what's what state should it start in? But let's just say this new sort. Okay, there you go. There's our constructor. Now, I want to have a public void attack method, right? This attack method is just going to call state dot attack. That's all it's going to call, right? Whatever the state is, have that. And then I also want to have a public uh, void set state just so that I'm able to 
uh, change the state of B. Sorry, if I'll say state equals S. There we go. Okay, that's it. That's the entire player. We have health level. We have a state. We have the constructor, which just sets the health. And when you create a new player, is level zero, let's just say, or level one, I guess. Um, and this state, this dot state equals new sword state. That's the original state that it's in. And then we have an attack method, but this method just calls the attack method of the state. And then we have a way to set the state and stuff. So let's go ahead and create the uh, state abstract class now. And if I'm going too fast and you want me to explain anything again, feel free to let me know. I'll explain how. Um, so state, uh, public abstract class. Uh, abstract class. It's going to be an abstract class because we don't want to create a state. Like, there's no object we want to make that state. We want to make a sword state or a bow state or something like that, right? So all this has is we want to just enforce that every state has a public abs uh, has a public void void attack. We just want to enforce that every state has an attack method. That's it. That's the entire state. That's the entire state method. So now let's go ahead and create um, the uh, sword sword state, okay, uh, and then we'll make the bow state. Right. So the sword state just has to. Uh, it, it's gonna that this is gonna extend uh, extend state, right? And so it now. Uh, why am I getting an error? Uh, public class extends. Um, so, uh, shouldn't this attack method have a parameter for player? Like, uh, like, like what player to attack? Is that what you mean? Is that, that's what you mean there? Cool. A little bit of a, someone with a, uh, Kanye West, your microphone is very, yes, thank you. For, okay, good. Um. Yes, if you mean attack method for a for have a parameter for player like what player to attack, yes, you could have that, but that's not necessary. Like, I'm just saying, make the player attack and it does some sort of attack, right? No, like that parameter will be used to pass which player we want the state for, like which player we want to, uh, like no, no like that parameter will be used to pass which player we want the state for, like, uh, which player we're assigning that state to which player we're like assigning the but attack itself is not a state attack itself is a method that's called and the the way the method works changes depending on what state you're in state dot attack this So the attack method itself, my, my idea for the attack method, uh, that will be the actual state class. My idea for the attack method is, is not that like there's any kind of, like you're attacking another player or something like that. It's just like shoot the bow or swing the sword. It doesn't matter if you're attacking what. Uh, okay. Uh, a reference player, a reference to the player that called the state. Like if sword state needed to reference something on the player. Uh, yeah, okay, if sword state needed to reference something on the player, uh, okay, maybe we can add that after, right? Right now, we don't, right? We don't need to do that. Uh, can you explain what the abstract state class does again? Yes, I can, because in the concrete state, you'll be saying attack that will attack this. If the, if the sword state needs some sort of access to some information in the player, um, then yes, then you need that. But we don't, the way I implemented it, you don't. Okay, we can add that after, though. We can add that after. Um, we can, for sure. Uh, but not the way I implemented this. Uh, can you explain what the abstract state class does again? So the abstract state class is just the parent of all the states. So maybe you want to have other weapons to have in the game, right? So you would just add a child of the state class. And being a child of that abstract state class just guarantees that there's an attack method. And there's some way to attack with that. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll implement something. Sword state needs to know something about uh, the player. Okay. Sounds good. So, um, the way I implemented sword state, 
because that is the only way you can change a state from the table top to the state class. Yeah. Let, let, let me finish typing sword state and bow state and then, and then we'll do some, we'll extend it a little bit. So the way I just did sword state is um, uh, that we have to override, override, right? Override a uh, public, public void attack, right? And so the attack is just uh, system dot out dot print ln. Um, yeah. Um, attack with a sword. Okay. Great. Um, that's it. That's the whole thing. It just guarantees that the state has some sort of attack method. Um, and then I will add a new Java class and I will, uh, sorry, I should do it in the actual package. Uh, Java class. Um, and I can say here that uh, I want this to be a bow state, same package. And again, all I want to do in the bow state is I just want to override the attack method. So this is a override, right? I want to have a public void attack. Right, and then this is just system dot out dot print ln uh, attacked with a bow. Okay, Let's say attack with a bow. Uh, is that everything? Yes, I think that's it. Uh, override bow state has to extend state. Here, extend state. There we go. That's it. So. That should be everything. And now what I did is I just I just made the main file in the in the player class. Like it doesn't really matter. So uh, I'll just say uh, let's just make some sort of main file here. This is the main that I chose. So there we go. Um, so um, uh, why doesn't it like this? Player p equals new player. Oh yeah, I want two. I don't need it. Two. Okay. So public static void main strings are oh, that player p equals new player one. So that means it has an HP of one. Let's just say. Um, so we're going to say p dot attack player dot attack player dot attack twice. Okay. So we're just going to show that both times this will attack with a sword and then we're going to set the state to a bow state. Okay. And then we are going to p dot attack again. It's going to see, you're going to see that we're going to get the reading that it attacked with a bow. So, uh, uh, I'm going to run the player and can't really see probably because it's very small, but it says attacked with a sword, attack with a sword, attack with a bow. So attack with a sword, attack with a sword, attack with a bow. And there we go. That's everything. Right. Um, okay. So how about let's implement here that, you know, you have a certain number of arrows, let's say. So the player needs, has a variable that's going to keep track of the number of arrows and the, the, um, the bow state, right? Bow attack, what do I call it? Bow state? Bow state. Needs to know how many arrows you have, right? So I'm going to say private int uh, arrows, right? I'm going to make a, a getter, right? Uh, I guess uh, I'll just initialize it to five or let's say three just to make it small. Uh, and I'll just make a getter method. So I'm going to say public uh, int get arrows, okay? And return uh, arrows. So we have a getter method for the arrows. So now when I go to the bow state, right, I have to ask, right, I'm going to say if, if, okay, I'll just put in a comment here, right, if the player has enough arrows, right, then do this, right, then attack with the bow. But else, right, uh, I'll do system.out.println. System dot out print ln uh, not enough arrows. Okay. So now, how do we check if the player has enough arrows? Well, one way we can do it is we can send in the player object, right? I can say uh, public void uh, player p, right? And I can say um, here p dot uh, if uh, I just said if already <laughs> if p dot get arrows right, is greater than zero, right, uh, attack with the bow, and then, uh, uh, oh, I, I guess I have to also set the arrows, let's just say, uh, let's just say, uh, I'll say, um, public, uh, void, lose, lose an arrow, 
and I'll just say arrows. Uh, arrows? Arrows. Um, so then what we want to just do in the bow state is we just want to call p dot lose an arrow. Okay. Uh, why is else? Else without an if. We do have an if. Why do we have no if? You gotta close the if with the curly bracket. Ah. There we go. Okay, it doesn't like p dot lose an arrow, so why does it not like p dot lose an arrow? Oh, there's a semicolon. Okay. <laughs> Thought it was some bigger error. Uh, okay, and then override doesn't work anymore. Uh, override doesn't work anymore. Oh yeah, okay, because then, because this class needs some sort of access to the, the player object. So maybe uh, you'd have to, uh, yeah, so you, we'll probably just have to actually adjust that in the actual uh, state class, right? So it's going to, they're always going to take in a player P, right? They're always going to take in a player P when they attack. So that's probably common that states need information about who called the class. Um, so I'll just say player P. Um, but like the sword state doesn't use it. It's fine. It doesn't have to use it. Uh, the bow state, uh, p.getArrows. Why does it not like p.getArrows? Cannot find symbol, location variable type p. P's right there. Uh, why does it not like it? p.losingArrow. Cannot find symbol. Sorry, I don't like this. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, you know? I don't know what I did. I clicked enter <laughs> and it works. So, let's see. Um, and then uh, the only thing we left we have to do is in the actual attack method, we want to send itself in, right? We want to send the actual player in. Um, so, okay. Uh, should we get? Why do I have an error here? Override state. No, it's overriding. Player P. Why is this not overriding? Method does not override or implement from a super type. It's extending state. Public void attack. Public void attack. Player P. Player P. It is in fact extending. Um, alt enter. So we alt enter. Remove annotation. Okay, what is this not like? Does not override the attack method, but it does override the attack method in state. There is the attack. Public. Ab did I spell something wrong? Public abstract void attack player P. Public void attack player P. Save the files. Okay. Uh, sword state's fine. Why is player state wrong? What does player state lose an arrow? Uh, public void lose an arrow. Oh, this is some sort of. That's what generated in the thing. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's that's what that's what generated just now. It might update. Okay, both. Okay. Okay, now it looks like it's okay. Everything looks like it just fixed there. Good. Okay. Um, so now I will run the player, and we attack with the bow. Okay, but I, I can't see uh, how many times I attack with the bow. So let me just attack with the bow. One, two, three. I'll attack four times. So now when I run the player, not enough arrows. It's the last one, not enough arrows. So there we go. So if you need your all, if you need all, if you need all or any of your states to know what object called it right which player maybe is attacking very common to need that then what you want is you want to be able to call you know player dot attack right player dot attack and what that's going to do is it's going to call the attack method on the state but the state requires the uh pointer the reference to the actual class that called it which will just say state dot attack this Right, so this is the object that is calling state, that is calling attack on its state. And then in the actual states, you can use the, the player that was put as input, like here we used it, uh, but in source state we didn't. It doesn't matter, you don't have to. There we have it. So yeah, thank you guys for suggesting that we, we do that because that's good to, good to note too, yeah, it's great. So technically not necessary if none of your states use the player. But probably that is very, that seems very common to need to do that. Okay. So um, let's 
move on. That was our state. I think it works perfectly. Yeah, that was our state. So let me just check if everything's working here. Yes, good. Okay. Um, good. So um, let's do the last one. The last design pattern we have is observer. So observer, uh, where did I put it? Here, this is the usable one. So let me let me just open them up quickly. And then we can talk about what my idea for observer was. Uh, close that. Okay, so the observer, I need channel. I need uh, observer. I need subject subscriber. I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Okay. So let's begin with the observer. So the observer example I have is that you have some kind of, you know, YouTube channel, right? So let's say there is some YouTube channel that's here, right? Uh, so I'll say, I'll call it just a channel, right? Uh, the channel has the ability to upload, okay? Upload a video. Uh, the channel is what's called a concrete subject, right? A concrete subject, something that actually sends information. Like it has the information, right? It has the ability to upload. I have also a bunch of subscribers. Okay, so uh, subscribers. Let's say I just have a you know subscriber class, subscriber class, right? And it has the ability to be updated, right? Or like you know, a notification is sent, right? I'll just call it update, right? Uh, but like you know, you get a notification on your phone, right? That's that that's what that method would do, right? When we upload, the subscriber should get an update. So we do this by the observer design pattern. We create these uh, abstract classes called subject, okay, and observer, okay. So these are the abstract observers, abstract subjects. This is the concrete observer, observer, concrete subject, okay, and. Um, we want to be able to, um, you know, subscribers, let's, you know, attach them to the channel somehow by subscribing, right? So the subject has some sort of attachment case there. Dream to eight. You got your mic on. Good question. Or no, I think you just have your mic on. Dream to eight. Okay. Again, probably, probably everybody has them turned off at this point. I will have them on. 26 because I have a slight feeling he might ask a question. I think we'll, we'll see. Um, I don't think I'm able to mute him. Yet. Okay. Anyways, so we are going to implement these four classes to do exactly this, right? So a subject, uh, let's see how the relationships should look. I want to just remind myself quickly. So a concrete subject inherits from the subject class. So this is good. Remember, this is called a concrete subject. This is the subject class. Then a subject, one subject, has many observers, right? One, two, three, well, one to many, right? Um, and subscribers inherit from the observer class. And that's it, there we go, that is it. So you can somehow, you know, you can relate these two. You can say one channel maybe has many subscribers, um, and maybe we'll implement that a little later. Maybe that'll be our little extra thing that we implement. It's just that relationship, but that's actually not necessary. Right? It's not necessary to say that. It's true, but it's not necessary to say that. But we can do that. After. Let's just for now, let's just implement this, and then I can add that. Just like an array list, and then it calls through subject. But whatever, we'll talk about that after. Um, so to implement this, I am going to go to live code. I'm going to create a Java class, and I will call it a channel. So the channel, oops, there we go. Channel is going to be one of our subjects. So I'm going to say this extends subject. Okay, subject is a class that we're going to create. Um, so, so I'm going to just put as a code here uh, as a comment. Uh, this class represents a concrete subject. Uh, does the abstract observer also have an update method or is it only the concrete one? It's also the, the abstract one has a concrete 
Sorry, the abstract one has a update method, but it is not concrete. Like you don't have a, let me make sure I, that I actually did that. Yeah, like you don't have an implementation in it. It's an abstract method just to guarantee that all of the children will have a way to be updated. That's what it means to be an observer, is that you are able to be updated. Uh, so yes, yes, an abstract method. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's see what you say. Um, so the channel will have, importantly, the ability to upload. That's pretty much all that matters is that it has the ability to upload. Okay, we give it a name, give it, da, da, da. it doesn't really matter. Sure, you can give it a name, um, but I won't even make a constructor because we don't even need that. Let's just say it just has the ability to upload. Public void upload. Uh, and let's say it can upload, it can take in some name, right? Some name of some video. Uh, doesn't channel also have a list of observers? So yeah, that's what I was mentioning here that it has, you could make a relationship between these two. I will implement that after. First, let's just implement it like this. But yeah, channel could have an array list of subscribers, right? Which would be this aggregation relationship like this. But it isn't necessary. We can do it without that too. But I'll implement that after too. Uh, won't channel have a state variable? Uh, the st so, okay, so the state variable is essentially what I'm doing it for the state variable in this example is um, is upload. So upload is the state. Either like, so it's not really a state, but it's more of like, uh, this is the method that's being called. So instead of like having a set state, when, when you, maybe when you do a set state on another object, it's gonna update all the observers, right? So, so like this is the set state, right? It's just that I'm, instead of like changing a variable, I'm just uploading. It's just a one action, right? It's just one action. But you're right. We can implement that after two. Yeah, for sure. Right? We can put that in too. Uh, what is the advantage of the observer? Well, it just means that uh, subscribers can just be added to the array list, right? Sorry, uh, do you mean of the observer design pattern or the observer actual uh, class? Design pattern. So the idea is just that uh, you can just attach subscribers to the channel and then have just one line in the upload that just says, um, that just says, uh, you know, notify all, like uh, notify all observers and all the observers will get the notification, right? Instead of, instead of having to call, you know, observer one dot update, observer two dot update, observer three dot update, right? You just do it to all of them at the same time in one line and observers can be attached or detached and yeah. Hopefully that'll make more sense when we actually get to the uh, when we get to the main method, and you'll see how we actually use it at the end. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, channel right now, all I want to do is I just want to say system dot out dot print ln right, um, and da -da, here we go. And I'm just gonna say uh, new video uploaded, and then I'll just add the name that we put in that we put in there. And importantly, I want to call a method, which is notify, no, notify observers. There we go, right? Notify observers. So this method right here is going to be inherited from the subject class. So subject classes have the ability to notify observers. Okay. So I want to do that when I upload, I want to notify observers. And this just means that all of the observers will be notified that an upload came. Now, if I want information to go with that notification, okay, then we'll we'll deal with that after. But right now, I just want all the observers to just be notified that I uploaded a video. That's it for the, the channel, right? We just want the ability, no no instance variables or anything. It's all good. Let's move on to subject, okay? So uh, subject, I'm gonna add a new Java class. I'm gonna call it subject. And uh, why does it do this? because it's useful sometimes. Okay, so uh, abstract class, right? Subject is an abstract class. Okay, and uh, the, uh, the uh, oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong one. Subject, there we go. Uh, it will have an array list of observers, right? Again, observers is gonna be another abstract class that we've created, but we are gonna need an array list of observers. So I'm just gonna say uh, import, import, java.util.arraylist. Um, and then from here, I want to create an array list, which only contains um, observers, observers, right? 
Uh, I'm going to call this observers. And it'll be a new array list observers. Okay, so the subject will have a uh, array list of observers called observers. We want the subject to be able to attach observers, right? Attach subscribers to the channel. So uh, public void attach attach observer o. So we want to attach an observer. All that's going to be is observers dot add o. Then I also want to be able to detach, right? Observer. So public void detach observer o. Oh, scary. <laughs> the Discord sound. What is Discord sound? Was it? I don't know what Discord sound that was. Anyways, um, so the uh, detach observer o. Again, we just want to uh, let's say observer dot uh, remove. Oh, um, and then finally, we want to have the method, which is notify observers, right? That's the that's the pretty much the main thing public void notify observers, right? Uh, and so the way you do this is you just say for observer, 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 O oh, in observers, right? Uh, for all of them, Right, you just want to say o dot update, and so all of the observers should have a way to be updated. Right, all of the observers should have a way to be updated. That's an important thing. So this is what it means to notify all observers. Just call update on all of them. Oh, sorry, that's supposed to be. There we go. Okay, and that is it for the subject class. So now let's continue. We're kind of moving in this direction. We did channel, we did subject. Let's do observer, and then we're going to do a concrete observer. So uh, from here, uh, I will do the uh, what is it live code? Ah, that's not what I meant. Live code Java. I'll create an observer. Okay, so the observer will also be an abstract class. Okay, and all we want from the observer is we just want to guarantee abstract void abstract void we just want to guarantee that all observers have a way to be updated that's it the whole thing okay all observers have a way to be updated so now let's create an observer right the observer will be a subscriber right subscriber so a subscriber okay uh you know has let's say a name, right? So uh, string name. Okay, uh, let's say I have a constructor, subscriber. Um, uh, the constructor takes in a, a string name. Let's say, uh, and just uh, this dot name, this dot name equals name. Then we want to override, right, the update method. So uh, public void update, right? We want to be able to be updated. And all that is, is I'm just gonna say system.out.println. Uh, I'll just say uh, name plus uh, ha has been, uh, has seen the new video. And that's it. The subscriber just has to, I just gave it a name. Like you don't have to give it a name. I don't know. I just gave it a name so that we can see in the, when we run it, the different names that show up. Like, so it's different observers. Um, and otherwise uh, that's it. You just want to override the update method. That's the important thing. So now that I have this, I have essentially all that I need, right? This is all the classes that are here. Oh, why is override not here? Oh, sorry. Subscriber has to extend, extend uh, observer, right? There we go. Now we are up. Okay, so that's it. That's all the code. I'm just gonna go to the um, I'm gonna go to the channel, and I have uh, so notify observers is still not here. Notify observers. Why is that subject? Um, uh, observer. Uh, observers. This should say observers. Um, notify oh, observers oh. here. Yeah, I just yeah? had a quick question. Yeah, go for it. 
I was just curious why um, subscriber couldn't just uh, extend, um, extend the subject as opposed to like going through observer first. Well, the thing is, is that the subject, the subject is, uh, has an array list of observers, right? The subject is what controls how do you keep track? How do you attach and detach the uh, observer? So, okay, so you're saying there could be just an array list of subscribers, right? Is that, that's your suggestion is that there could just be, yeah. yeah. And then the, mm -hmm. could, could, could they not be just removed from the, that um, class itself? Yeah, okay, you're right. In this case, that would work. Um, but you a lot of the time have uh, different kinds of observers, right? So you could have subscribers, but maybe you also have like apps that need to be notified, right? Maybe you also have to like say like, okay, Ooh. subscribers need, or, or like maybe you can say uh, subscribers through email and subscribers through text. Those are two separate observers, right? And yeah, you still account. want all of the, you still want all of them to be called. So you just want an array list of observers, which then have it called. It's organized like that. Oh, and then you can specify from there. I see. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So does that make sense? Make sense? Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no problem. Is there a chat box that I can type? Yeah. Yeah. In uh, COE 528. Uh, on, oh, okay. There's a chat that says COE 528. No problem. But also you can unmute if you want to unmute. That's fine. Um, okay. So there we have uh, the subject. Let's just go to the channel. And okay, notify observers. Okay, fixed now. Good. Uh, let's just uh, take a look at the uh, uh, main that I created here. So the main, I'll just again, I'll just do it in uh, in channel. So uh, public void main string arg. So I created a channel. I created a subscriber tom, a subscriber bomb, and a subscriber wom. And I and I attached a, uh, a subscriber one to the channel. <laughs> Sorry, I made my made my partner laugh here a little bit. The, the bomb, Tom, bomb, and Wom. Um, channel attach sub one. Channel attach sub two. Uh, channel dot upload a cool new video. So you give it a title. Did I? Uh, I gave it a title. Yeah, that's true. I gave the when we go to the channel class uh, string name. Uh, upload a new video. You give it a name here. But notify all observers. So all of these observers should be called except subscriber three, right? Which is the attach, um, because they're not attached to it. Subscriber. So let me call uh, channel, uh, uh, is that what I want to call it? Yeah, channel, live code, yep, yeah. run, uh, run anyway. Okay, so new video uploaded, cool new video, right? Uh, Tom has seen the new video and Bomb has seen the new video, right? But um, the, uh, the last one, subscriber three, has not seen the new video, right? That wasn't called there because it was not attached as an observer, right? And there we go. Uh, okay, so the code works. Uh, let's edit it a little bit here. Uh, what's the error in subject? Wait. I don't think there's an error in subject. It's just showing that for some reason. Oh, it doesn't. Can you work. explain again why Wom didn't see the video? Uh, because here at the end, uh, because I never attached this one as a subscriber. Because you have to attach the person. These are subscribers, right? Maybe it would be better to call them people, right? They're just people. And then when I attach them, they become a subscriber. But until I attach it, right, it, it's not a subscriber. Okay, I see. Right? And so it will not be updated when I do channel it up. All right, got it. Okay. Uh, so you see his underline has never called. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go ahead. So if you could say the channel is the, is the, is the, is, okay, for the subject. We're having a one-to-one -one relationship with the observers itself, yeah, correct? Uh, yeah, like one one to many. One subject can have many observers. Yeah, yeah. one to many. Right, one subject can have many observers. Yeah. If we have the main and the channel, can we just have a new class and just make it sure. the channel? Yeah, sure, that's fine. You could make a client that calls the channel. Yeah, that's fine. I was just gonna ask if you're gonna post the code. Uh, I can post the code. I don't really know. I guess I can post like the TXT files. Yeah, I guess I can post the yeah, TXT files. I think yeah. I can like copy and paste it and stuff. Sure. Okay. Yes, I'll do that. Um, I do have one question. Yeah. For the um, update uh, method, which is the update method would be in one of the concrete observer uh, classes, right? Like, uh -huh. um, do we, I, I don't know if this is correct. Do we have to, um, when we call update, not in the, 
I guess it, you'd have to change it in both the observer and in the uh, in the subject. But don't you have to um, uh, path the uh, the cl uh, the the um, object of like the thing that you're trying to update from? Yeah, the concrete object. The, the yeah. concrete subject, like, I mean, no, concrete like subject. subject. yeah. Subject, You yeah. have to pass the concrete so I thought you had to put, like, update, and then in the brackets they had this, right? Okay. To pass that. I don't know if you have to. I've just... Yeah, for yeah. For reason, I remember that. So, I know what you mean. So, we I didn't have that here because the update method doesn't rely on any information from the subject, from the concrete subject. Oh, right? that's right. That was right? just to update. To, if you had to update like get a, if you exactly. had to get a certain information from the exactly update. i'm going to implement that now though because that's an important thing so i'm going to implement that let's say the channel has uh i don't know let's say it has the video has some sort of uh, let's say the channel has subscribers and you, the the update method needs the number of subscribers for some reason okay so we'll we'll include that now too um but yeah. what channel is the recording going to be posted to my channel uh do i have a link to it i don't know if i have a link to it uh, how about i make a link to it Can I ask one more question? Yes, of course. Yeah. So, why don't we have a get uh, get your method in like the channel class? In the channel class, well, I don't I don't have any need for. There's no instance variables, so there's no need. There's nothing to get. There's no instance variables. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But actually, it's, now I'm gonna implement that. I'm gonna put like a, a like a subscriber count or something like that, or maybe something else. I don't know. I haven't decided yet, but. Maybe a total number of videos or something like that. Yeah. If you can just correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. So what we took was that we have a setter and getter method, and we usually have the setter method calling the notify, the notify calls all the updates. Correct? Uh yeah yeah okay yeah that is one way that the observer is uh is used a lot yeah that the okay. setter method calls the notify observers. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Exactly. Yeah. No problem. Um. So how about I'll edit this code? Thank you for sending the link to the channel. Thank you. How about I'll edit this code a little bit? So now instead of just notifying that a video has been uploaded, right? Let's say I will say uh, uh, maybe like the most recent video. I'll say uh, uh, private, private string uh, recent title, okay? And then here I'll set, I'll set a uh, recent title equal to name, right? So the most, the title of the most recent video will be set to this upload, button, whatever I've uploaded, right? And now I want the observers to actually say the name of the video, okay? Actually say the name of the video. Okay? Um, so that means that the, uh, the subscribers, right? name has seen the new video no no no. i want to say name has seen the video uh video and i'm gonna say well uh i need to figure out the name of the new video right so i'm gonna get the most recent i'm gonna get the most recent video from the channel so what i have to do in the channel is i'm going to have to make a, a public uh public string uh, get recent title uh, title okay and it's going to return recent title it's going to re return the name of the most recent video okay then when i call notify observers i'm going to pass in the channel itself okay so notify observers is going to take this right and i'm going to put this oh i guess sorry, i can't say this sorry i'm going to say uh notify observers is going to take in um a uh, subject, uh, yeah, subject S. So I'm going to put in that S into update because channel extends subject, right? So it's going to put a subject. Notify observer is going to take the subject. It's going to send it now to the observers. The observer is going to take in a subject S. Okay, good. Um, and then finally, the subscriber itself will take in a sub subject S. And the name of the video will be s dot uh, get recent title. Okay, so let's see what it doesn't like. Uh, get recent title. Uh, no, I think I just need to save it. Honestly, I think it's gonna work. Something, something needs to update. I don't know what needs to update, but I think it's actually gonna work. 
So what is it now like in subject? Uh, I didn't fix this yet. It doesn't want to tell me. Reached end of file without parsing. I don't know what that means. So, but it works. I don't, I don't know. Does, that, does anyone know what that means? Oh, is the bracket error? Uh, yeah, I think you just needed an extra one for the notify of user. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. There we go. Uh, and then subscriber doesn't like this still. Why does it not like this? Method get recent title. So the subject S. Um, yeah. Uh, um, issue with the inheritance here. So I guess I have to send in an actual channel. I think you're doing it from the channel. Don't pass subject, pass channel. Yeah, I have to sub in, I have to send in an actual channel. It feels wrong for some reason, but okay. Yeah. So the issue here is that the subject abstract class has no get recent video or get recent title method. Channel has a get recent title method. I could add a get recent title method to this, but that wouldn't really make sense to do that because why not? It wouldn't really make sense to do that. It's better just we have a get recent title in here. Um, oh, it wouldn't make sense to do that because then this wouldn't get the title from the actual channel. Uh, the channel has the actual title. So what I need to do instead is still pass in this in subject. We're not taking in a subject. We're taking in a channel, a S. Uh, and that's fine. And then observers, where again, we're taking in a channel, S. Okay. And then finally in here, we are taking in a channel, S. And so get reason title works. Okay, so we have to actually send in the channel, the concrete subject. Now I think we are ready to go. I can run the channel class, uh, channel Java, run this. Uh, where did my, where did it go? Is it here? Uh, output. Uh, there we go. So video uploaded. Cool new video. Tom has seen the, seen the video. Cool new video. Bomb has seen the video. Cool new video. So yes, there we go. So the two people here, sub one, sub two, still sub three has no update because it's not been attached. But now sub one, sub two, not only are updated, but they actually get the information, right? They actually get the information of what the recent title is. Okay, what the most recent thing is. And you could save it to a variable here. Like if you wanted your subscriber to use the title for some reason, uh, you could save it then into an instance variable or something like that. And so there we go. Okay, that is now implemented. Um, okay, uh, there's nothing really else I wanted to go through. There we go, we have the, uh, went through all four different design patterns, did like a full example coding one. Uh, so, oh, I cannot hear you. No, oh, man. I cannot hear you. Is that because of me? You're not in the call. Oh, you're on the call. I cannot hear you for some reason, but keep trying. And if I can't hear you, just, uh, just, uh, just type in the chat then. Okay. Well, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I don't like, I don't really have anything else to say. We went through all these things. So, uh, I'd just be here for some questions. I'm happy to answer some questions. Um, can I cover UML, UML symbols? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I think we can still use subject. Okay. So you think we can still use subject? Uh, I'll get to your thing, Ethan, for sure. Uh, let's just see uh, what it is, um, but we need to downcast. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, let's do that. Let's try that. Subject. I'll switch these back to subject. Um, I'll switch this back to subject. I'll switch this back to subject. And then here at the end, I will say, uh, at, uh, yeah, like I should do if S is instance of, but like I know it's an instance of, so uh, I'm going to downcast S, a downcast S to channel. Okay, that did work. Yep, that's good. No error. Very nice. So thank you for that suggestion. Oh, that's good. Uh, so yeah, so it can be a subject. That makes more sense. It it sh I I really felt like it should be a subject there. 
Um, so yes, it is. And so you just downcast your channel again. Yes, you should have a if s instance of channel, but whatever. I have to do that right now. Um, okay. And then uh, yes, can we cover various UML symbols? Yeah. So I mean, you pretty much got them all there. Plus is just going to be public. This applies to instance variables or methods. Minus is going to be private, right? And uh, well, I didn't see the amp. I didn't see the at sign. I saw this for protected. No, no, sorry. I had the hash for protected. That's what I remember seeing. Um, and you just include that in the UML diagram. Uh, yes, we will do deep copy and shallow copy. Soon example of that. Um, but uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know what else. To, uh, yeah, I don't know what else to say about this one. Is there something I'm missing? Is there something, is there a particular question, Ethan, that maybe you had about these ones? Um, a deep copy and shallow copy. Yeah, for sure. So, um, oh yeah, and relationships too. Okay, let's quickly look at relationships just quickly with the UML stuff, and then we move on from the UML stuff. Uh, let me find it here. So, I mean, this arrow with the, uh, uh, oh, I have to remember now, I've got to be, correct with what I'm saying. Uh, let me find my notes. Uh, Drop the relations with AF and RI. Oh, uh, abstraction function and rep invariant. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We can talk about that. Uh, so let me just go through quickly. This is this with the filled in is inheritance. Okay. This is uh, implementation um this is aggregation so you know between so let's say one car has four wheels right one car has four wheels um and that's it uh dependency so this uh, uh should this be a open no this should be a filled in one so implementation should be a filled in one and then dotted with an open one is dependency. So inheritance means inheritance. Implementation means implementation. Those are pretty self-explanatory. Uh, this is like an array list. You have an array list of certain types. Dependency is like um, uh, you have a, um, you use a method. So this class uses a method from this class. Um, like a paragraph between the classes and instance variables and inside the field can be rewritten. Okay, so you can go. Maybe we can go through that too. Um, uh, shallow and deep copy, they are not too bad. Um, essentially, if you have a class, like uh, let's see if I can come up with an example, some sort of class, like point and circle, obviously that the teacher did, right? Um, so we can say, uh. Can do zoo with animals. We can do that, I guess. Zoo has a certain amount of a certain animal. No, maybe I'll say um, uh, uh, okay. Let's do let's do this. This I don't know if this will work, but let's say frame. Frame is a class. Okay, uh, one frame contains one. Oops, contains one painting. Okay, a uh, painting is just a collection of pixels, right? Let's just say. So it's a, uh, it is, uh, it only has primitive data types, right? So let's just say it's just some sort of color, right? Um, so if I were to make a copy of a painting, right? Let's just, let's just implement it. Let's just do it here. Um, so if I go to live code, I'm going to create a Java class. I'm going to call it painting. So a painting, let's just say, is just a number. Like, let's say it's just some value. Like, it, maybe it's just a bunch of values. I'll just say uh, private int color one, uh, color equals two. Let's just say that, or whatever. The painting is just some color. Um, then if I had some kind of uh, main method, right? So if I had a uh, uh, public static void main string args there we go right and i created some uh 
painting p equals a uh, new painting painting right um then we have the, okay I, I guess let me give it a constructor i guess so just quickly uh, say uh, uh, uh public painting int i um uh, color equals i okay so and then just put two in there we go same thing but just i just edit it now so now let's say i want to have a another painting let's say painting painting p2 or called p1 right which i want it to be the same painting but i don't want to ref like so if, if right now i say painting p1 equals p2 that's fine they're just both referencing the same painting but if i were to then adjust let's say i'm i'll, I'll make a, a setter method so um uh, public uh void set color equal to int i right color equals i right so uh if i were to set the color of painting p2 or painting p1 i would also set the color of painting p2 and that's not what we want we want to make some sort of copy right so um uh i have to remember the exact way to phrase this i have my notes here luckily so uh constructor methods uh where do i go through clone method okay so uh, clone clone method override okay so if you want to be able to clone an object you need to implement clonable uh, implements clonable. Um, so now from here, we want to override, override, um, the clone method public, uh, public painting clone throws. And so it has to throw a, uh, clone, not supported, supported exception. Okay, and so now we're gonna implement the clone here. Right? We're gonna implement the actual like doing the cloning, but um, what kind of cloning do we do? Do we do a deep clone or a shallow clone? So a deep clone is needed when some of your some of your instance variables are mutable. None of the instance variables are mutable, right? This is an immutable int, right? And there's no uh, there's no set here, right? Um, so. Uh, if there was a set, let me think for a second. If there was a set method, then that's also fine. Sorry, none, okay, let me be clear here. That's actually not what, true what I said. Uh, you need a deep copy if some of the instance variables are reference to mutable, mutable objects. There we go, are reference to mutable objects. None of the instance variables are reference to mutable objects. So we are okay. So um, I can just do a shallow copy. And what that means is I just return, okay? Um, uh, and this is, the, this is the syntax. You just say, uh, you typecast it to painting and it is a, uh, you say super dot clone. That's it. No, I think I missed a bracket in my notes there. Super dot clone. Um, and this should, yeah, this should work fine. What does that take in? um clone not supported exception clone not supported exception uh what is it not like uh declare did i spell something wrong clone not supported exception uh there's no brackets in that uh, and throws yes there we go perfect yes okay so there that's all the that's all you need to do for the um uh, cloning of a shallow copy. So this is a shallow copy clone of the painting because the painting is just a color, right? There is no uh, instance variable, which is a reference to a mutable object. But now if I wanted to, for example, put this uh, in a frame, right? Let's say I put this in a frame. So first of all, let me just quickly say here, you know, I can, I can make a new painting P2, which I will call as just um, P1.clone, right? And painting P2 will have uh, a certain color. Why can't I do this? Oh, do I need a try block? Uh, it doesn't like it because it's throwing the exception. 
So I guess I need to have a try block here. So try, um, uh, try this. Uh, I need to uh, catch uh, exception E, uh, whatever. Do I have to actually put code here? Yeah, I don't have to put code here. Okay, there you go. Now it works. Just because this because this clone method throws an exception, I have to do something in the main method. So big. I guess I could say throws here, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, so now this will work. Painting P2 will be a copy of P1, and you don't have any issues because uh, there's there is no instance variable which is referenced to a mutable object. Um, let me also say public public um, int get color. Uh, and it just return color. Right? So now when I go here, I can say, uh, am I in the right? Yeah, I can just say uh, system, system dot out dot print ln. Right? Uh, and I'll just say um, the color of painting one is um, p1 dot get color. And then I'll do the same thing for painting two. P2, P2 back. And they'll be the same color. Run, uh, run. Okay, didn't like it for some reason. So painting one is fine. Painting two, Java, uh, erroneous tree type, any, live code painting main. That returns one. Okay, so didn't like the second line. P2, cannot find variable P2. Right there's a variable p2. Uh, did it? Did it? Oh, what does it mean if variable is a reference to a mutable object? Okay, I'll explain that in a second. Um, why is this not running? So it doesn't recognize that p2 exists. I tried implementing on that means, but it keeps giving me an error. You think it's in the try, that's why. So like it doesn't guarantee, is it throwing the exception? Can I say system dot out dot print ln uh, exception? Like, is there actually an exception that's being thrown here? It's fine. No, there's no exception being thrown. Um, so, it's just in this block, so it's not there. We have to understand the clone itself. Put everything like S out. Put everything out in the try block, out of the try block after the expiration of P2. Oh, 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 put, put this there. Yes, okay, that makes sense. Yes. Okay, that worked, yes. Um, how would you do that if you didn't want to do that? To do all, like, now we have to do everything in a try block. Would I just say, would I just say throws, can I just say here throws, oops, throws um, clone not supported exception? Uh, I think you can just put a try catch in the clone itself. Oh, try catch in the clone itself? Mm -hmm, that makes sense. Yeah, because if you that put throws sense. in the main, for the main, it's going uh, to where, give you an error because it's not going to be able to throw to anything. Okay, so I'll just say, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so maybe here, instead of throwing it here, I'll just say try this block of code and just catch exception E. In which case I want to say uh, system dot out dot print ln whatever uh, exception. So now we don't need the try block. Makes sense. There we go. Okay, perfect. That worked. Uh, declare uh, declare painting p two outside try and then do p two dot clone. I think it's actually the dot clone that needs to throw the exception. So that was the issue. So I think that. That wouldn't work, but yeah, that's good. Um, okay, so 
there we go. We have a shallow copy of the painting. We are, the, we are able to make a shallow copy of the painting. Okay, fine. Let's now make a object. Let's make a frame object, which is going to contain a painting. Okay, a frame object, which is going to contain a painting. So a uh, new Java class, I'm going to call it frame, right? Frame is immediately, I'm going to say private painting uh, P. Let's say private painting P, okay? Um, it will have a painting object as one of its reference types. And then maybe we'll say um, uh, private, private int year, you know, maybe some year that the frame was made. There we go. Um, so let's make a constructor for the frame, right? So to, to make the uh, frame public uh, frame, I'm just going to take in an int or I'll say painting, painting P and an int I. Okay. And I'm just going to say this dot uh, P equals P and uh, uh, year equals equals I. There we go. Alt shift F. All right, thank you. I will use that from now on. I appreciate it. Um, so uh, we've created a frame. Okay, now I also want to be able to clone. So implement clonable. Um, I also want to be able to clone the frame, right? But the thing is, uh, what's the thing? Hold on. Clone the frame. Make an object. We change the key. Yeah. Okay. So. If I have a point origin radius object painting P, change the painting P. Okay, so uh, I don't really care about the year, it doesn't really matter. Um, uh, okay, this is fine, this is fine. Now, I want to make a well, let's make a shallow copy of it first and see what's the issue, right? And then we'll we'll go from there, right? So I want to say, okay, I'm going to make a bad shallow copy here. Like we shouldn't make a shallow copy because one of our reference types, one of our instance variables is um, referencing a mutable class. So someone asked that, what does that mean? So this is an instance variable. It is referencing a class type P, painting, type painting. Painting is a mutable class because I can set the color, right? I can set the color. No problem, no problem there. Um, I can set the color, so it's a mutable class. So frame has an instance variable, which is referencing a mutable class. So I need to make a deep copy, but let me show you first why we need to make a deep copy, right? Let's do a shallow copy and see what the problem is. So override uh, public um, frame, clone and uh did, did i have throws in here still no i don't have throws in here C clone I, I just get rid of throws from there uh return um frame super dot clone. there so uh, uh this is running for the try block <laughs> sorry uh try this Uh, catch exception exception e and system dot out dot print print ln um, and then I'll just put whatever after um, I forgot to close the brackets yes what did I forgot to close the brackets here yes thank you thank you for that uh, and it looks like I forgot to close the brackets here too. Close. No, that looks fine. Uh, why is this not? Oh, I have to return a frame. That's why. Okay. So uh, now, and then I guess now I just say return. Why did I not say return for this one? Did I say return? Oh yeah, yeah. I just say. Uh, yeah, I did return. What's the issue? Why is this mad at me? Alt enter. Add return statement. I do have a return statement. Catch. 
me, What's it? even if you catch the exception, you still have to return something. Oh, it even said that here too, actually. The error is also here. Yeah. Okay, so like let's just not like there won't be an exception so we don't have to worry about that <laughs> there won't be an exception in, in this example here i think that's why you're not supposed to i think that's why it has to throw the, the uh, it has to throw it, it throws the exception in clone you can't you can't catch it in the clone method because to have, what are you going to return then yeah 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 nothing you're not going to return anything um i mean i guess i can say here return no and now it should not be mad at me there you go okay return no I'll put that here too. Return no. And now it won't be mad at me for not returning anything. So um this is bad. This is a shallow copy, which is bad. Okay, so it, it shouldn't it it doesn't this isn't gonna be good. Because now when I make a main method, okay, I'm gonna make a main method here. Uh, I'm in the same package, yeah, okay. So I'm gonna make a uh, public static void main um string args uh that's fine then i'm going to first of all create a painting so painting p1 equals new painting with a color of two right uh painting p2 equals well no i don't, I don't need to paint it okay so then i'm going to say frame f1 equals new frame uh do i need a thing yeah i need to put a painting right so the first thing i'm going to put p1 and then i'm going to put a year like 1700 okay then i'm going to say frame f2 equals f1 dot clone okay and then what i'm going to do is i want to only change the uh okay now i want to change the painting that's in frame f1 right so uh, no, not change the painting. That's in frame F1. I have two frames right now. One is a clone of the other. So if I do system dot out dot print ln, and I say uh, the painting in F1 has color, um, and I say um, plus uh, uh, I have to look at the code here. Set center. Uh, a1 clone, a1 set center. Okay. Uh, in my frame, I need to have a setter method. So, um, public set. Uh, public uh, void set painting. Painting p. Okay. Um this dot p equals okay so now i'm able to set the painting uh let me just copy this out for a second so now if i say f1 dot set painting uh, i'll create another painting let's say i'm going to create another painting right here let's say we have two paintings painting p2 equals new painting which has a color of let's say six right set painting to p2 right what we want is that if i say system dot out dot print ln and i say the the color of the painting in frame frame f1 is and then i'm going to say plus uh f1 i guess i need a method here that says uh uh set circle yeah okay I, I need another method here i guess that says um uh public void uh get get painting color right uh i guess it's going to return public int okay so public i uh, know uh return p is it p p dot get color i don't know if i've actually implemented a get color in painting i have implemented get color okay now, the color of the painting in frame F1 is F1 dot get painting color. Okay. Um, uh, and then I'll do the same thing for F2. Is F2. Is F2. So. 
Let me do this. There. When this runs, we have two paintings, one with the color of six, one with the color of two. I'm gonna create a new frame, P1, made in the 1700s, whatever. I'm gonna clone that, okay? And then I'm just gonna say they both have the same, uh, I'm gonna get the painting color. They should both have the same painting color because I just cloned it, right? But then I'm just gonna change, this is only change the painting in frame one, right? And so we would hope that this has the original, sorry, the F2 still has the original painting in it, but F1 has the new painting in it to painting two. But you will see that that isn't the case. If I run frame, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, that is the case. <laughs> so what happened? Uh, and then my example is wrong. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. Uh, what happened? This, I got two, two, six, and two. So two, two. I changed, I set the painting. It's because I'm adding too many methods. <laughs> That's why. Um, the thing is, her code in the example didn't have the, didn't have the text part. I wish that example worked. <laughs> let's see, let's see what she said here. Um, where was it? It was in data abstraction. And then we have the clone method. Oh no, that's all rep okay. Looking for the clone method. That's what she did. Question? Um, what ha- Oh yeah, okay, don't know if I- Should we run a try catch block with the code method or should we just do it the way she taught us instead? Uh, just do it the way she taught you instead, with the throws. Yeah, just do it like with a throw like that. Why did this not do what I thought it was gonna do? Um, we are taking f1.getPaintColor. f1.getPaintColor returns p.getColor. Set painting. Oh, set. No, 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 no. This is, this is fine. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is fine. That should have done. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take P1, which is in frame one, and I'm going to set the color of this to int, uh, to, to, uh, uh whatever. Uh, 100, let's say. Now, let me, before I, say anything and it's wrong again let me let me run it okay so let me draw this out <laughs> we have that we have frame f1 sorry we have painting p1 painting p2 p1 has a color of uh two p2 has a color of six we are putting we are putting uh f1 the frame around p1 and f2 f2 the frame around p2 Okay. Um, well, actually, to be clear, uh, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's, that's, that's not right. We're putting, um, we have P2 over here, right? F2 is another frame. We're cloning F1 and turning it into F2. So F2 also has P1, which has a value of two, right? Now, if I take P1 and set the color, it's going to change both of these paintings. Right? It's going to change both of these paintings, the colors of both of them. And so we see that F2 and F1 are not detached anymore. Right, They're not actually detached. They're not actually like independent clones of each other. They are still attached because P1 is a mutable data type. So you see that now when I say P1.setColor, both frames have a different color. Isn't color int type like immutable? Yeah, int is immutable. P1 painting is mutable. Painting is mutable. It's because they share P1, right? So F1 and F2 are aliases. Uh, yeah, well, they're different. F2 and F1 are different objects, but they both contain the same painting variable, P1. Their, their painting variable is are both referring to P1. So if I were to create a little diagram for this, right, I would say this is F1, right? F1 has a has a year right, which is 1700, and it has a painting P, 
right, which is pointing to P1. P1, which has an int, uh, what did we say, int 2. F2 is a separate frame, which also has a year of 1700, but its pointer variable is also pointing to P1. And so these are not independent clones of each other, right? Clone, we want them to be separate objects. So F2 should get its own version, its own version of P1, right? It should get its own version of P1. So what I did originally is I um, I said, uh, I just changed the painting. I just said F1.change painting. I just changed it to a different painting P2. We don't need P2. P2 isn't helpful here in this example. P2 doesn't make any difference. Okay, um, so that's why I used P2 there. That, did, that didn't work. So what we want to do now that we can see that you know we we need we can't just do a shallow copy because shallow copy makes that makes it that F1 and F2 are not independent of each other. Okay, they are not independent of each other. They they should be though. We need to do a deep copy. So I will open up my notes and go to the deep copy. And so the way that we do a deep copy is we want to, when F2 is created, we want to create a new painting object, right? Uh, which is a clone of P1, I, I guess I'll call it P2, I don't know, just another painting object, which has an int of two. So that now when I change the color of P1, it does not change the color of F2. So the way we actually do that is um, in the, so in the, frame class we do this same uh where are we the same line okay but what we do is we say um yeah we don't say return we say frame frame f equals we say frame uh sorry f dot um uh i guess f dot set center uh it's not, not set center sorry set painting. Do I have a set painting method? Yeah, I do have a set painting. I have to set the painting to be a painting um, center.clone. Yes. Um, P.clone. There we go. So this is, I'm saying, and then I want to return F. Return F. So this is a deep copy because I'm creating a variable f, which is the new frame. It is a clone of it is a clone of this frame, which just clones all of the instance variables, right? But we specifically want that the the painting f dot set painting. We need to set the painting to a new object, a new painting object, right? And I'm going to do that by just cloning the painting that was already here. So I'm going to clone the painting here. Uh, clone this one to create a new painting, right? Um, and with the same values though, and I'm going to set F, I'm going to do set painting on F to that. But, and I use the same syntax as before. This line is basically the same thing as when we cloned in the actual painting class. And then we return that. And that's that. Okay. <laughs> that <laughs> took a little bit of a uh, fiddling around, but uh, hopefully that makes sense. So there's your comparison, deep copy, shallow copy, why one you need one rather than the other. No problem, Athens. Nice to see you. Okay, well, he's gone now. But. Um, okay, guys, that is pretty much my time for today. I do got to get going. It's 830 now. Um, but hopefully you found this helpful. I will post the recording as soon as possible. Um, and if you have any more questions,